Fantastic. That's a great layout on how that comes together. And for those of you, thank you for listening. As we transition off of what John just shared on uh, quote to cash integration to now to chapter two, contract to cash, and including how that we enable you to handle your ASC 606 revenue recognition. So um, contract-based accounting, there's these three things that we talked about, the megatrends at the beginning, the shift from being order-based in your accounting to contract-based in your accounting. That moves reflects the move from thinking about things just in terms of transactions to ongoing customer relationships, both in how you bill, but then also in how you support and how you bring them customer success and the value that they've got. And by doing, by being contract-centric in your county, it makes it easier for you to see what your customers have bought and to recognize that revenue over time, compliance with ASC 606, which in turn then gets you the proper valuation as you're going out and fundraising. We're going to continue our narrative with Emma, because in Emma's case, in this metaphor that John showed in the product, is managing pricing and billing used to be very challenging and time-intensive because it was all done manually. But now, Emma will be able to use Sage Intex flexible price lists to create these pricing models across all different, several different types of use cases that she may want. In this particular case, she signs the price list to a contract and the system ensures that the invoicing is accurate because we set up the billing against that item master and then the rev rec against the billing in that item master. So let's jump in and we're going to transition back over to John here for Chapter 2. Let's see how Emma handles pricing and billing in more detail. John? Thanks again, David. So as we go ahead and pick things back up, uh, what we'll see is the uh, intact processes for helping manage subscription and contract-based organization. So Sage Intact's native contract object allows companies to make the switch from a transaction-based workflow to an object-based workflow. This is especially important to companies subject to new guidelines under ASC 606, which might require more stringent tracking of deferred revenue and recognized revenue across different designations than, than previous. Perhaps you need to take deeper look at your unbilled versus your billed and your paid statuses. How much of our revenue is substantiated by cash versus just how much of it's out there in outstanding invoices? How much of our deferred revenue is substantiated by cash versus just simply what we've invoiced? Or how much of that have we simply not even billed yet and is sitting in a backlog? Furthermore, using a contract object to manage your lead to cash workflow gives you unprecedented visibility into these designations for each individual component of the contract. So being able to see perhaps a subscription element from a setup or services engagement, uh, an add-on component that might come in over time, uh, a usage element that's being billed uh, in arrears as you know, uh, your customers uh, process a volume of transactions or use uh, certain levels of service. Uh, and you need to track and manage that. All of this simultaneously records all the relevant transactions into two separate books in Intact, side by side managing today's accounting guidance, as well as the uh, treatments under future ASC 606, side by side, and the ability to dual report, the ability to see that information in real time comparatively uh, as you go ahead and navigate the transition from ASC 605 to 606. How this really starts to take shape is if we were to have, for example, a contract in Intact, and this contract may have come from a CRM system such as Salesforce through uh, something like the Salesforce Intact integration. But the key here is this is the one place where we're going to go ahead and manage our relationship with that customer. Whether we're looking at the initial sale, whether we're looking at add-ons that might have happened during the initial term, uh, or it's intact tracking renewals off of that information in one place, you don't have to string together multiple orders, multiple transactions um, by yourself anymore. This is all going to be contained underneath the contract, the contract outlining the key elements of, of uh, who we're dealing with, the terms of the agreement. Uh, as you'll note across the top, tracking some uh, both high-level as well as detailed financial information, as we'll see shortly, about where are we in terms of contract value, invoicing, cash receipt, uh, outstanding amounts as well. All of that being driven by the detail that's coming from the different individual elements of this. So as we scroll down and take a look at our contract lines, for example, we can note all of the different products or services that have been uh, made components of this contract. 
And each of these may have individual treatments as you've agreed with your customers, perhaps for how you're going to bill it, when you're going to deliver it, when are you going to start recognition on these items. What's the nature of pricing? Is it a fixed price? Is it something perhaps that's driven by, again, quantities and usages? Perhaps those quantities and usages have tiered or stepped up pricing. The more you use, the less you pay type of agreements. All of that automated within the billing price lists associated to the contracts, and then the, the setup of the individual items. Perhaps you have services engagements as part of it where you need to you know, bill the uh, respective time and, and materials from your service organization. Each one of these different elements underneath this contract allows us the flexibility to do just that and to see those types of information. It also allows us to manage separately the activities of billing from recognition of revenue. So we may note here under each of these individual items, as they come in and land in intact, uh, automation around billing or revenue might kick in. From a billing standpoint, we may bill this one time. Intact is still going to create and manage a schedule for uh, when we're going to actually, in fact, you know, bill that. Uh, that 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 template or that schedule will actually translate to a setup of specific dates and line items. In this case, a one-time event of the ninety thousand. But perhaps that information is going to be recognized in uh, or over a, over a different term, I should say. Uh, you know, perhaps we're going to look at that as a, on a straight line basis for current revenue guidance. So that $90,000 we are going to bill, we're going to go ahead and recognize over the life of the course of the subscription. Maybe that line item would have some different treatment uh, if we were going ahead and looking at uh, ASC 606 guidance. So instead of a straight 7500, we might be looking at more of a daily delivery because that's the guidance we have on the adoption of 606 for, um, for this particular line item. So each individual element of the contract bringing with it the ability to separate the revenue components from the billing components. And again, some things might be related to uh, different elements perhaps of service engagements that are tied to getting this subscription up and running for your customer. You can go ahead and associate this particular contract with a project. And now your services engagement teams are out there uh, you know, tracking their time, tracking their expenses as they go ahead and deliver those different individual services. We might have quantity-based items designating that we're going to go ahead and wait for some usage elements to come in against that contract. So we can go ahead and designate different billing amounts. Um, you know, how is it that we're going to go ahead and manage the different components of each individual line item as it lands on the contract within, uh, within Intact? We'll see in a moment how this all comes together for functions of things uh, such as, as invoicing. But while we're sitting here, we'll see that all of those different events are going to be tracked for us in detail underneath uh, the contract. So if we were to pull up, for example, the transaction history of this contract, what we'll note is the different events that occur from the creation to the invoicing, perhaps to recognition, to receipt of payment, all of these different events within Intact, all generating individual journal entries to track what was the activity that occurred and what should the accounting impacts of that be. Not only is it, is it tracking how much did I bill or how much did I recognize, but automating those movements between those unbilled, billed, and perhaps paid buckets as well. So at any point in time, not only can you see the transaction details, but if you were looking at this information at a higher level, it can all be summarized for you as well. So always giving you that snapshot of where am I on this contract, and looking again at the contract as a whole to say, under uh, the guidance of ASC 605 in Journal 1, where am I from an unbilled, billed, and paid standpoint? for both my sales revenue and my deferred revenue. Seeing that potentially for each individual line item as it designates down below. And then the same information will be available for uh, purposes of side-by-side -side ASC 606 reporting as well. All of these entries are automated throughout the process. At no point are you taking spreadsheet data that you've been managing offline and translating that into journal entries. The idea behind the contract object, the automations of billing templates and revenue templates, is to really put you in the position of managing to the exceptions. At any point in time that you need to make edits or modifications to the terms of the contract, you can simply step into the, to the middle, uh, you know, perhaps change the timing of revenue events, uh, perhaps put things on hold and resume them. 
um, update billing schedules for uh, revised agreements, et cetera. Invoices as they are created, and we'll see the process momentarily, also a part of the historical element of the contract. So we'll see here that we've had a large upfront invoicing uh, for our, getting our subscription started, and then some periodic invoicings over time. Again, highlighting that ability for different terms to exist underneath uh, the individual, uh, individual contract elements that might go ahead and actually exist out there. Now, as we take a look at how does this translate to some of those events like invoicing and revenue recognition, we'll go ahead and, and take a look at our generate invoice process for uh, this particular contract. So if we were to take a look, for example, at uh, perhaps we want to uh, generate our invoices as of the end of November, and in our case, we'll go ahead and we will filter ourselves down just to that particular contract that we were working with. So we have our Vertex subscription contract. So what Intact will do based on this information supplied to the invoicing process is allow you to go out and see what's coming through and available to bill. So as we go ahead and initiate the preview for this particular contract and all of its different elements underneath it, Intact will go out, take a look at those different billing schedules, perhaps take a look at the projects and see if there's any time or associated expenses to be invoiced. Uh, look and see if any usage information was uploaded for uh, quantity-based items or transaction-based items that need to go ahead and be built. And so we'll see here in this case we have a total of 15,932.48 uh, in total to be invoiced, but we can drill down on that and go ahead and get an even deeper breakdown. As we go ahead and drill down into that, Intac shows us where all those different billing components are coming from. So all of this in one place, regardless of what the source is, a subscription-based item that we're simply managing to a schedule versus usage items where we went ahead and perhaps uploaded individual quantities, and those quantities bounced off of individual pricing models. So in this case, we see some tiered pricing coming into play. So for our uh, total number of units that were supplied, 50 of them were included in the base price, price of the subscription, and the additional items above that 50 are priced out of their respective uh, values, 9 at 100, 10 at 75, 20 at 50. We see that our services team has been actively working on the project to get our customer uh, up and running or perhaps add in a new custom element for them. So we see that Nick and Chuck have been out there expending uh, time across the billing period, and that needs to be passed through and priced and invoiced. Perhaps they incurred some expenses while actually going ahead and, and delivering those services. So all of these different elements simply here and available for us to go ahead and quickly and easily turn into an invoice out to our customer, automating the workflow further, sharing that information perhaps with Salesforce or CRM organization, um, and of course making all of the associated entries for invoicing and revenue along the way. As you think about all of that information on an individual contract, it's not uncommon for folks to start thinking about you know, looking at uh, particular uh, individual uh, elements of all of your contracts across time. So perhaps thinking about forecasting. Well, how do I know when I'm going to bill all of my different customers? How do I know what revenue I'm going to recognize? How can I perhaps you know, see that information uh, for today's revenue guidance of ASC 605 versus ASC 606? This is all going to be available for you uh, in individual reports that can be delivered out into dashboards. So taking a look and seeing, you know, when are we expecting to recognize the revenue for all of the different components and different contracts, sorting across intact variety of dimensions. We're looking at this perhaps by customer, by product, by territory, by sales rep, uh, any of those individual values. So forecasting revenue, perhaps forecasting billing. When is it that we're going to generate, send our invoices out the door and generate all these invoices to our customers? A critical item associated with that that often gets lost in most, uh, most of our uh, competitive systems is the ability to actually forecast the, the cash to come in off those invoices. Based on our terms and based on the billing schedules we have, Intact can go ahead and identify for us uh, when we might actually expect to receive some of that cash as well. So being able to see and forecast that information 
for revenue, for billing, for cash receipts, being able to look at our transition from ASC 605 to ASC 606, and again, leveraging those intact dimensions. So not just seeing numbers at a high level on, a, on an income statement or balance sheet, but being able to actually take a look at and see, you know, maybe the different components that make up our revenue, being able to see side by side, 605, 606, how would we look uh, after the transition versus, uh, well, you know, under today's current accounting guidance. So all of this information driving off the automations within Intact. Your users not being bogged down in day-to-day -day data, spreadsheets, uh, uploads of journal entries, uh, recreation of data, but simply managing to the exceptions. The Intact contract object has all of the information underneath it about your individual subscriptions, the components of those subscriptions, and now your users are sitting there uh, able to carry out their day-to-day -day job more easily and efficiently because they're now managing the events on a day-to-day -day basis. I need to bill. I don't need to go out and find out what to bill and then bill. A big difference between managing the events and managing, uh, managing the data. So those are all the key elements that the intact contract object and our ASC 606 uh, and 605 uh, treatments bring to uh, the SaaS and subscription uh, world. Forecasting, insight, uh, revenue recognition and billing automation, communication back and forth with your CRM system of record, uh, and all done seamlessly and effortlessly. David, thank you. Turn it back to you. It truly is fantastic, everything you just laid every, laid out for everyone, John, on how these pieces come together and how you automate managing the contract and how it's different from the firms that only do subscription billing that lack the ability to have the general ledger or only do quoting and lack the ability, the general ledger, or even some of the other cloud financial products that are out there that are stuck and being order-centric. Having this complete solution ties uh, the whole kit together, and then for you, our listener, making your life so much easier by getting you out of manual work, and that last example John just said, trying to figure out what to bill and then billing it, to allowing the system to bill it with putting your own governance and checks and balances in there and producing the reports that you need to see at the end. It's fantastic.